Well, hello. It is indeed another beautiful day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Jeff from Historical and Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm elated that you decided to worship with us today on this, the first Sunday in the month of December. That's right. We're already in the 12th step, as Bishop Rosa Williams would say, of the year. Where has the year gone? Well, let us go ahead and get into uh, this service on today. Again, call somebody, let them know that HHMBC Augusta is on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. The chances are that if you are enjoying these services, somebody in your circle will also enjoy them. Unless we learn to know ourselves, we run the danger of destroying ourselves. Knowledge unapplied is dangerous. The mission of our church is to change the world one disciple at a time through reaching, teaching, preaching, and the practical application of the gospel message. For those of you that like to support this ministry, you can do so securely by using our Givelify app. You can see the URL right there on your screens, our Givelify app. Or for those who prefer, you can use Cash App. That's dollar sign HHMBC Augusta 1729. Again, dollar sign HHMBC Augusta 1729. Two nine. However, God places on your heart for you to support this ministry. We want to say we appreciate you no matter what your gift is. For those of you that know, and for those that don't know, we're going to let you know today. Yes, we do still have our GoFundMe for our fire fund. That's right. We need to rebuild our sanctuary because the church is the body of born again believers. But our sanctuary is no longer and we are collecting and asking for your donations to assist us in rebuilding. We did have adequate insurance for those who want to know, but with the high cost and the inflation after, you know what, that P thing, look at here, we need some assistance. So if you can, ma'am, if you can, sir, no matter what you give, no donation is too small, we are seeking $500,000 is what we need in order for us to adequately rebuild. Now, any part of that, somebody's got $5, somebody's got $50, somebody's got $500, somebody's got $5,000. Absolutely, somebody out there that can write a check for the entire $500,000. However God places on your heart, we will greatly appreciate it. Pastor Jay, Pastor Jeff, PJ is asking for your assistance. We want to better your viewing and listening experience. Those of you know, this year we have been challenged with the technology. That's because we need some new equipment. Absolutely. So piece of equipment that Pastor Jeff needs is, you can see that right there, the Yolo Box Pro Portable multi-camera live streaming studio. Cost $1,300 on Amazon. So if you want to purchase the in entire uh, box and send it, that's fine. Or if you prefer, just you can cash at me at dollar sign, I solve your problem. Dollar sign, I solve your problem. We greatly appreciate it because we want to give you the best experience that you can with these services at this time to upgrade the equipment. That's what it looks like now. We need your assistance so that we can put a building on this lot. December. December is National World Food Service Safety Month. That's right. National World Food Service. I'm sorry. World Food Service Safety Month. All right. Let's be safe if we service this food. It's also National Human Rights Month, National Human Rights Month. And there you can see it for freedom, peace, equity, dignity, hope, love, education, prosperity, justice, food, religion, and speech, National Human Rights Month. It's also World AIDS Awareness Month, World AIDS and HIV Awareness Month. Let's make sure that we are aware, my friends. And I'm still rocking and letting you know about Cafe on 8th, Cafe on 8th, and my favorite gourmet waffle there. Look at here. When you get there, you tell them that PJ sent you. That's right. You tell Mr. Dallas, PJ sent you the Cafe on 8th. Look, isn't that scrumptious looking right there? That is their uh, peach cobbler waffle. And I'm going to tell you, it's addictive. How do I know? 
because I'm addicted to it. All right, Cafe on 8th. And we're going to find some other restaurants in the Augusta area to highlight. Somebody say, I must be getting paid. Well, no, I don't. I just love good food and want to let you know where good food is at also. We're still letting you know about that left frontal cortex, the left frontal cortex of your brain, my friend. That's the portion of your brain that is primarily responsible for positive thinking, positive thinking or rewiring of your brain called neuroplasticity is supported by the Bible, Proverbs 23 and 7. For as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. Okay, I know I didn't read exactly on that. I wanted to make it gender neutral so you understand what I'm saying. Here are the scriptures, a few, not an exhaustive list, but just a few of the scriptures that support neuroplasticity or the rewiring of your brain, my friends. Proverbs 23 and 7, Romans 12 and 2. John 10 and 10, Psalms 139 and 14, Philippians 4 and 13, Matthew 17 and verse 20, and Matthew 21 and 22. Just a few scriptures to let you know that God absolutely wants you to rewire your brains, my friend. It's right there in the Bible. Our book for the month, our book for the month is The Creature from Jekyll Island. Where does money come from? The money magician's secrets are unveiled. Here is a close look at their machines that create the illusion. Notice that the illusion called money. A boring subject? Hmm. Just wait. Look, if you don't know about the Federal Reserve, how it got started, and how the system that we use now, which is not a governmental governmental system, you need to do yourself a favor and read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. I tell you, you're going to be surprised, my friends. But look, you better, so you'll know how money works. You really want to know how money works, know how the banks work. This is the book to read. This is our book for the uh, the month of December. And I'm still letting you know about Tony Robbins' Life Force. This is a book that has medical breakthroughs you can't afford not to know. Medical breakthroughs you can't afford not to know. Look, it's a medical reference. Get it. The odds are there's somebody in your family or somebody you know that can benefit from the resources and the information that's in the book, as well as all of the book proceeds go to Feed the Hungry. That's right. He donates 100% of the book proceeds to Feed the Hungry. I'm going to keep rocking this because I think it's a notable cause. For those of you who have birthdays this month in the month of December, that's right. Let me tell you, what do I want to say? What do I want to say? I want to say, blessed born day to you. Blessed born day to you. Blessed born day, God bless you. Blessed born day to you and many more. All right now, blessed born day to all of you folks who are born in the month of December to include my youngest, my baby son. That's right. That's right, PJ's baby son, and that would be none other than J. Franklin Moffat, his full government name, who was born on December the 26th. Blessed born day to you, son. For those of you who are celebrating the anniversary in the month of December, I'm not going to sing again, but blessed anniversary to you. I like to say, look, every day, we choose every day, that's right, every day to stay married or get a divorce. Every single day. That's right. So for those of you who are married for another year, I want to say congratulations. May God's peace rest upon you. And may you continue to make a conscious decision each day to stay married. All right. (laughs) Y'all know what time it is. You know what time it is. Put it in the comments. What time is it? It's prayer time at HHNBC. Look, if you have a prayer, put it in the comments. PJ will pray for you. I might not pray for you live on the air, but I will go back and pray for you. Again, put your name or the name of a person that you need us to pray for. As I pray, I want you to call the name of Clarissa Brown and her family as we mourn as we mourn the transition 
from life temporal to life everlasting of our brother, our comrade, the Reverend Dr. Clarence Brown, who is also a, the, a past commander of DAV Chapter 44, El Mendale Rivers, North Augusta, uh, South Carolina. Uh, he will be missed. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We praise you and we thank you as we come to you with hearts of grief as our brother, our comrade, our friend has made that transition from life temporal to life everlasting. And it's selfish that we're going to miss him. And we recognize that. And so we ask that you would give us that peace that surpasses all understandings as we transverse these days to come. As the family now prepares for that homegoing service, we pray, God, that you would lift them up. You give them that peace again that surpasses all human understanding as they navigate these times that are bittersweet. Lord, you do it in a way that only you can. And all others, God, who may be dealing uh, with the transition of a loved one, transition of a friend, we ask that you would comfort them in a way that only you can. We pray a special prayer, God, for our comrades and for our friends and those that may be dealing with anxiety, may be dealing with grief, may be dealing with depression during this time of the year. This season brings about depression. We ask that you lift them up. Let them know life is worth the living because Jesus lives. Let them know that they're not alone, that they have a friend, not only in Jesus, but they have friends right here on earth. Help them not to isolate themselves, but to reach out and ask for help when they need help. God, as we continue on with these services, we pray that you will continue to place on our hearts the mind and the heart of giving. But we know it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And as we continue on, we ask now that you would open our spiritual eyes that we might see in the spiritual realm, our spiritual ears, that we might hear what you're saying to us individually as well as collectively. Now, Lord, allow the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart to be accepted when I say, you are indeed my strength and my redeemer. Whatever I fail to pray for, we know that you won't fail to grant because you are a sovereign God and you provide all of our needs and our provisions. In the name of Ben Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord. Amen. If you agree with that prayer, put amen in the comments. Put amen in the comments if you agree uh, with that prayer. All right. Somebody knows what time it is. You know what time it is. Put it in the comments. Y'all know what time it is. It's disclaimer time. Look at here. If you're not willing to read for yourself, research for yourself, reason for yourself, process the information you're going to receive the day for yourself. And if you don't want to take responsibility for your own spiritual growth, this just may not be the message for you. PJ wants you to stick around. I just want to be transparent and upfront with you. If you're not willing to do those things, you just may not like the message. However, stick around. But in the case, in case. You are willing to read for yourself, research for yourself, reason for yourself, process the information you're going to receive today for yourself. And you know, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's your responsibility for your own spiritual growth. Stick around. We might teach some each other something. We might teach each other something. We might help each other out. Our scripture lessons for today, our scripture lessons for today on this first Sunday in December, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, Psalms 47, verses 1 through 9, uh, which is foundational scripture for the International Sunday School lesson. Those are our foundational scriptures for today. Matthew 6, 25 through 34, reading from the New Jerusalem Bible. And if you don't have a New Jerusalem, some Bible. Read along with PJ. Read along with PJ. And then in your private devotion, use the translation, uh, transliteration or the version of your choice. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. That is why I am telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and what you are to wear. Surely life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more, much more than they are? Can any of you, however much you weary, add one single cubit to your span of life? The answer we denote to that is no. 
And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his royal robes was clothed like one of these. Now, if that is how God clothed the wildflowers growing in the field, which are there today and gone tomorrow. So don't worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? What are we to wear? It is the Gentiles who set their hearts on all these things. Your heavenly father, somebody put in comments, my heavenly father, your heavenly father knows you need them all. Set your hearts on the kingdom first and on God's saving justice and all these other things will be given you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. <laughs> Stop worrying about tomorrow. We can't control it. It's not even here yet. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Can I tell you a secret? Let me lean in, lean in. Let me tell you a secret here. When and if tomorrow gets here, it'll be today. Now think about that. <laughs> Does tomorrow ever get here? We can't live in tomorrow. We only can live in today, my friends. Let me move on. I'm having fun already, Sister Newsom. Psalms 47, 1 through 9. Psalms 47, 1 through 9. This is a song for the choir master of the sons of Korah. Psalm. Clap your hands, all ye people. Acclaim God with shouts of joy. For Yahweh, the Most High, is glorious, the great king over all the earth. He brings people under our yoke and nations under our feet. He chooses for us our birthright, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God goes up to shouts of acclaim Yahweh to a fanfare on the ram's horn. That was an instrument <laughs> for those who don't know. Let the music sound for our God. Let it sound. Let the music sound for our king. Let it sound. This has been the word of God for the people of God, from the man of God. Allow it to permeate your hearts, your minds, and soul and become evident in your conversation and the lives that you live. Oh, let me read. I didn't get to uh, verse 7. Da, 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 da. For he is king of the whole world. Learn the music. Let it sound for God. God reigns over the nation, seated on his holy throne. The leaders of the nation rally to the people of God, to the God of Abraham. The shields of the earth belong to God who is exalted on high. Thus ends the reading of God's word. Did you know is that portion? Did you know? Did you know, Sister Francine? Did you know, Miss Kate, the Cor that the Korites were a group of temple singers? A choir, no less. No less. <laughs> Did you know? Did you know that the use of parallelism, a common Hebrew poetic device, it is evident how Jesus contrasts worrying about life with observing the lilies and the birds. There it is. The use of parallelism was a common Hebrew poetic device. Jesus used what the people knew. All right. Did you know that the concerns about food, drink, and clothing were very real and pressing for Jesus' audience, living under Roman occupation with many experiencing poverty. That's right. So they had a concern, not like many of us today. They had a real concern. If they said they were starving, they really meant they were starving, not they just didn't have the food that they wanted to eat. All right, enough of that. Let me move on. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Can I ask you a question, sir? Are you a rule maker or a follower? Hmm. How about another question? Do you adhere to or break the rules? <laughs> no, all of us have an answer to this. Do you adhere to or do you break the rules? And finally, put in the comments. Put in the comments why you believe that rules are necessary. There's no wrong answer because I asked you to put in what you believe why rules are necessary. Are you a rule maker or a follower? 
do you adhere to or break the rules and why are rules necessary? Where in the world are you going with these, PJ? Y'all stick with me. You're going to find out exactly where we're going. God's rules count. Somebody put it in the comments. God's rules count. You know why they count? Because they're really a matter of life and death. You might hear that again during this message. God rules count. That's the title of our message. The bottom line up front, some rules are important. However, God's rules are a matter of death or life, literally, my friends, and spiritually as well. That's the bottom line up front. Our talking points for today, sovereignty and support. We're going to talk about sovereignty and support. We're going to talk about singing and substance, singing and substance, and finally, stability and specifics, specifics, if I'm saying it correctly. You know, sometimes folks say, you know, I don't pronounce my words correctly, but you all know what I'm talking about. You get the point. That's effective communication. These are our talking points for this message as God's rules count. Let's talk about sovereignty and support. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Are you one of those of little faith? Are you one who believes that God gave you a purpose without giving you provisions? Are you one who believes that God gave you a vision? <laughs> And he won't make provisions for that vision to be manifest in your life. Will you yield little faith? As the late, great James Cleveland would say, where is your faith in God? Huh. Let me move on. So sovereignty and support. The then and now. In Psalms 47 it celebrates Yahweh's sovereignty over the nation of Israel. That was a large group of people. God chose judges. He chose prophets. He, ch you know, he chose an individual that he talked to, and that individual would talk to the nation. And so he didn't deal with individuals on a one-on-one. -on -one. In antiquity, his sovereignty was over the nation of Israel. While Matthew 6 emphasizes Yahweh's way supportive role in providing for our daily needs, spirituality, and those things that we need naturally, individualized because of the work of Ben Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. So in Psalms 47, it was the nation, a large group. In Matthew, because of the work on the cross, it's individualized. God's sovereignty and support for us as individuals, not just as a nation. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Somebody ought to get happy today out of just that part right there, that God worries about you, cares about you as an individual. Matthew 6, 25, 34. That is why I'm telling you not to worry about your life or what you are to eat, nor about your body and what you are to wear. If God is sovereign, if God is going to support us, what are you worried about, my friends? Surely life is more than just food and the body more than just clothing. Don't you have more to worry about? Look at the birds in the sky. God takes care of the birds. And if he takes care of the birds, my friends, it makes you think that he won't take care of you. Even in this season, he's still taking care of you, my friends. I'm speaking to those of you that may have find yourself challenged with difficulties during this time of the year. God is still with you. God hasn't left you. And can I share with you, if you can accept it, if you can believe it, the spirit of your loved ones, the spirit of your loved ones, the transition from life temporal to life everlasting does not die. Their spirit is still alive. I just want to share that with you. And hopefully you allow it to live through you. Let their legacy live through you. All right, let me move on. Sovereignty and support. The child doesn't worry about provisions, protection, or prosperity. Let me say that one more time. For those of you who say that you are a child of God, the child does not worry about provisions. It does not worry about protection, nor does it worry about prosperity because the parents take care of them. And if we can take care of our own children how much more the sovereignty of God will take care of us and support us. After all, 
After all, we read in the number one best-selling book of all times that in the beginning, God created the heavens. Who created it? <laughs> if he created it, don't you think he'll take care of it, my friends? So again, why do you wear it? If God is sovereign in your life and you believe that all things are working together for your good, why do you wear it? God's rules count. If we follow his rules, we won't have to worry, my friends, because his rules count. He's sovereign. Second, we're going to talk about singing and substance. Somebody said, what does that have to do with anything, Pastor Jeff? Can I tell you, singing is absolutely necessary. As a matter of fact, uh, the foundational verse for the International Sunday School lesson was a song. It's a song. Singing is important. Did you know that according to the Bible, Satan, I don't talk about him much, but Satan's job in heaven was he was the choir master. He was over all of the music. <laughs> Singing is so important, my friends. Let the music sound for our God. Let it sound. Let the music sound for our King. Let it sound. My friends, can I tell you, if you are caught up in one of those good old fashioned gospel songs, one of those songs that has the lyrics that reach down and grab you on your heart, your soul. Look at here. It will lift you up out of depression. It will lift you up <laughs> out of your anxiety. It will lift you up out of your negative thinking. It will absolutely rewire your brain. It will be neuroplasticity exercise, my friends, singing. When was the last time you tried it? So this Psalm 47, it is a song. It was a reason to sing for the choir master. Right there, I tell you, the choir master of the sons of Korah of Psalms. Clap your hands, all your people acclaim God with shouts of joy. Can I tell you, it's impossible. It's impossible for you to have the emotions of joy and anger or sadness at the same time. There are two different chemical uh, reactions, and they both they won't act at the same time. So if you're allowing the chemicals, the dopamine, the serotonin, if you're allowing those, those happy hormones to be released in your brain, my friends, you won't have time to think about being depressed, have time to think about being angry, have time to think about being sad, not even have time to think about your grieving, my friends. Shout, singing can do that for you. For Yahweh, the most high, is glorious, the king, the great king over all the earth. He's a reason because he provides all of our substance and we can praise him through singing. We can thank him through singing. We can worship him in singing. He brings people under our yoke and nations under our feet. Now, that was the old. This is what Israel was saying, because you do remember, I hope you do. If not, you can read the story of he brought them out of Egypt. He brought them out of bondage. And let me say, Egypt was a blessing before whatever was a bondage, but it became bondage because the nation of Israel, the people, God's chosen people started worshiping the gods of the people around them and they forgot about their God and they didn't follow the rules. Simply, they did not follow the rules and so they suffered for not following the rules. Did I tell you God's rules count? There's a consequence for following the rules. There's a consequence for not following the rules. Singing a substance, my friends, can help you fulfill the rules to make a joyful noise unto him. Psalms 100. Acclaim Yahweh, all the earth. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come into his presence with singing of joy, with songs of joy. Be sure, be sure that Yahweh is God. He made us. We belong to him, his people, the flocks of his sheepfold. Come within his gates, giving thanks. Hallelujah. To his court, singing praise, singing, my friends. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for Yahweh is good. His faithful love is everlasting, his, his constancy from age to age. My friends, sing. We have substance. We have something to sing for. If you woke up, I, I can hear that word that says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise him with your lips. Praise him with your dance. Praise him in the song, my friends, because he gives the substance to give him praise for. John 3, 14 through 18. If you can't get substance out of this, if this doesn't give you reason to sing, my friends, I don't know what will. 
As Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone, 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 everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. If that's not substance, my friends, I don't know what substance is. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only son. That's right. Let me read that one more time. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only son so that everyone, everyone, that's you, ma'am, that's you, sir. That's right. That's you. That's you. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but so that through him, the world might be saved. No one, no one, no one, no one, Sister Kate. I like that. I love this part. Every week we read this. I put it into, into our message this time because this is the real substance. No one who believes in him will be judged. That hellfire brimstone, this was your life track that so many of you who are, are in my age bracket remember. No one who believes in him will be judged. But whoever does not believe is judged already because that person does not believe in the name of God's only son. Look, if that's not a reason to sing, I don't know what to make you sing, my friends. If that's not enough substance to give you something to sing for, I don't know. You may not be following God's rules, but God's rules counts, my friends. Singing is substance. What will you, my friend, can you put in the comment? What songs do you think you'll sing today? Is there a song ringing in your heart right now? Put it in the comments. What song will move you from where you are to where you need to be or where you want to be at today? Put it in the comments. Sing that song, my friends. What will you sing about on today? We're talking about God's rules count. That's right. There it is. God's rules count. And finally, our third point, stability and specifics. Stability and specifics. For those of you who may not know, that's a representation of the Ten Commandments, the specifics of his rules. He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. My friends, I'm going right to the chase right there. That's what Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus Christ said. You're going to see this again, but I wanted to put it there in contrast, the old and the new. Psalms on the right-hand side and grace and mercy on the left-hand side. The 600-some-odd, 630-some-odd different uh, rules and commandments that the rabbis came up with for the nation of Israel, Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Reform Judaism, reform Judaism. That's Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. So Matthew 6 is a part of that reformation of Judaism. He condenses it down to two from 630 plus down to two. That's stability and specifics. My friends, that's something to shout about. Exodus. 314, if we go back to antiquity, and God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Moses wanted to know. He wanted to know what he going to tell the people when they ask him, who sent you? Who gave you the authority? Whose sovereignty are you operating on, Moses? The stability of the sovereign God says, I am that I am. Is there anything that doesn't fall in that? <laughs> the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, he says, I am that I am. And I can tell you, so many I am affirmations I, 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 that, that I can't tell all of them to you right now. But the I am affirmations are absolutely wonderful affirmations for us as born again believers to affirm in our unconscious, in our conscious mind, in our hearts and our spirit of whose we are and who we are. The I am, because I like to say, because of the great I am, Jesus is. And because Jesus is, I am more than a conqueror. Because Jesus is, I am uh, on my way to heaven. Because Jesus is, my name is written in, in the book of life. Because Jesus is, I am successful in whatever I put my hands to do. I am the lender and not the borrow. Look here, let me move on. I'm getting into a whole new message, Sister Newsom. I'm doing good. Let me move on so I can get you in and out of here on this first Sunday in the month of December 2023, almost into 2024. Exodus 21 through 3. 
the stability of God. This is what we're looking at right now, the stability of God as because his rules count. Exodus 20, 1 through 3, and Exodus 20 is where the Ten Commandments can be found. But at the beginning of it, it says, And God spake these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. He established himself, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There it is, the very first of the Ten Commandments. And he establishes who he is. He establishes his sovereignty, the stability of who he is, and the specifics as he goes into those Ten Commandments that he gave. He wrote, gave to Moses to take to give to the people, my friends. And for those of you that believe, I'm going to say this, Sister Newsom, some, I've heard this uh, throughout my my experience as a Christian in church. We say God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I would say there's a truth to that. The sovereignty of God never changes. That's the part of him that never changes. But how he deals with his people absolutely changes. We've already established that in the Old Testament, in times of antiquity, he did not deal with every individual. He dealt with the nation. And he chose individuals that were his mouthpiece, so to speak. But now, because of the work of Jesus Christ, Ben Yahweh Yeshua, his son, he deals with us individually. <laughs> Isn't that novel? Isn't that something to sing about? He deals with us individual. That's how much he cares about us. That's how specific he gets, my friends. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Here it is again. We've read this before. Here's the specifics. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two, that's right, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. Think about that. My friends, out of all of the law, like I said, 630-something um, commandments that the nation of Israel had to follow, Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he gets so specific, he brings it down to two. That's the specifics of it. Love the Lord thy God with everything that you got, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. My friends, if we can do that, can I tell you, that happens, practice that. That encompasses a lot. It really, it does. It takes a lot to love some neighbors, my friends. I'm just being transparent with you. And then to be able to love, because love is an action word. Love is not just something we say. Love is an action. So to put the action with the word and love God with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our minds, and the Hebrew word, all of our oomph, it's not even a word for that. In other words, the very essence of who we are, love God with all of that. He was very specific. Jesus is clear about the rules, my friends. Sister Newsom, I think I did good today. I think I did good today. Jesus is clear about the rules, my friends. God is stable in all his promise. God is stable and all his promises. God is faithful. He's faithful to his promises. And like it or not, like it or not, my friends, I still love you, but like it or not, God's rules count. They really are a matter of death or life. What have we discussed today? What have we discussed? We talked about God's rules count. We looked at the sovereignty and support. We looked at singing and substance. Some of y'all to be singing right now. Stability and specifics. I hear the word that I'm, I'm the, the words to the song. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere, my friends. That's right. That's the song for this season. Go tell it on the mountains. And that's a metaphor. You don't have to really go to the mountains. However, <laughs> some of you know I actually am in the mountains. Look, let me move on. Let me move on. Stability and specifics. Are you following God's rules, my friends? Can I just ask you, are you following God's rules? You don't have to put it in the comments. I'm going to tell you, you ought to be because God's rules count. Life is a gift and it offers us the privilege, the opportunity and responsibility to give something back by becoming more, by following God's rules. Tony Robbins, 
I'm going to keep rocking this because I think this is a wonderful quote and it challenges us and we can do something different with it every time we read it. Life is a gift. That's something to be thankful for. That's something to sing for. And it offers us the privilege, the opportunity and the responsibility to give something back by becoming more, becoming all that we can be for Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. If you haven't related to this message, my friends, it may be, it may be because you have not been born again. And I want you to stick around because we're going to tell you how you can be born again so you can get as excited as PJ gets. That's right. So you can get just as excited as I get, my friends. Look, I already read this. I'm going to read it again. As Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This is the reason we get excited. So that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Everyone, doesn't matter who who you are, where you are, what you've done, who you've done it with, why you did it. Can I tell you, it says everyone, he gave us life so that everyone who believes in him could have a past. They could have that, but in between that conjunction, I once was a drunkard, but I once was a sinner, but I once was whatever. You put in there what you want to put in, and then there's a, but the grace of God. He did that for you, ma'am. He did that for you, for you sir. For this is how God loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, not to hellfire brimstone, but may have eternal life. But God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. You can be saved, my friends. No one who believes, if you believe, it doesn't matter what you've done, if you can believe, this is what he promises, no one who believes in him will be judged. But whoever does not, believe is judged already because that person does not believe in the name of God's only son. Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. My friends, look, at the, at the conclusion of these messages, I say this. It's your choice, my friends, what you do with it. I, I, I don't have a hammer to bring down. I don't have a gavel to, to pronounce judgment on you. I have a gavel, but not one to pronounce judgment on you. So look, you can do it your way. You can do it some other way. You can do it God's way. I'm just going to tell you, it's your choice. But be warned, God's rules count. And there's consequences if we follow his rules and if we disobey his rules. If you love me, keep my commandments. There it is right there. If you love me, Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus Christ says, keep his commandments. Keep the rules of God. He gave us the rules. We say that we love him. If we really do love him, then we will keep the rules, my friends. Our call to action. Call to action is to read Exodus chapter 20, then Matthew chapter 22. Read Exodus chapter 20, then Matthew 22. Refamiliarize yourself if you've read it before. Educate yourself if you have not read it before. Then ask yourself, ask yourself if you follow God's rules. You're going to read a set of rules. In both of those. And then ask yourself, do you follow God's rules? Not the pastor, not the deacon, not the mother, not somebody else, not your sister, your brother, or your mama. Ask yourself, do you follow God's rules? And then I challenge you. I challenge you to take action. Commit today to following God's rules every day. Commit today to following God's rules every day. Not just when you feel like it, but every day, my friends. All right, repentance and forgiveness. The invite to those of you who need to be born again. I want to invite you to accept Ben Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And if you do, I want you to put hashtag accept in the comments. You can do it by using the ABCs. What are the ABCs, you ask? I'm so glad you asked, PJ. The ABCs are A, admit that you are sinning. B, believe the gospel story. C, confess Yeshua with your mouth. Confess Jesus the Christ with your mouth. A, admit that you are a sinner. B, believe the gospel story. That is God sent his son through 42 generations. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He went to the cross. He died on the cross, was put in a borrowed tomb. On the third day, he rose from the dead and was seen by many for about 40 days and then ascended back to the right hand of the Father. That's it in a nutshell. Read the book of John and give you a full detailed story. But that's it. Admit, believe, and confess. If you do that, my friends, then you have that conversation 
or what I call, or you call, may call prayer. I call a conversation with God. When you do that, then you're born again. I want to welcome you if you did, ma'am, if you did, sir, to the body of born again believers. The Bible, the Bible reflects that the angels are rejoicing. I want you to put hashtag accept in the comments and then give us a way to contact you. We want to connect with you, ma'am. We want to connect with you, sir, so that we can give you further instructions, perhaps answer some questions that you may have now that you have started a new journey. You may feel the same. You may not feel the same. You're going to still be challenged with some of the things that you were challenged with before, and you may not be challenged. However, what's important is spiritually, spiritually, you have exercised neuroplasticity. You rewired your brain to accept been Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus of Christ, and your name has been put in the Lamb Book of Life. Hashtag accept if that's you, my friends. We call that conversion. And again, I want to be the first to welcome you to Body Born, Born Again Believers and congratulate you on your conversion. For those of you that find yourself in a backslidden state, you know what that is. I don't have to explain it to you. You know what a backslider is. Look, this is your opportunity if I would, would used to say, if you can backslide, you can slide right on back. That's right. If you slid one way, you can slide back the same way, the slide the opposite of the way, the way that you slid. <laughs> we want you to reconnect with the body of Christ. That's what we want you to reconnect. Use CPR method. The CPR, what is that? CPR is conversation with God. Over and told you, I call it a conversation. That's just prayer. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to pray for you. Uh, because you know exactly what happened. I don't. Can't nobody else have that conversation with God, the Father, better than you can. I'll pray that God continues to bless you, but you have that specific conversation with God. That's called a conversation. Then proclaim your victory. Your name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He hasn't taken it out. He hasn't lost any of those who God gave to him. So your name is still there. You just have been not walking in your privileges of being a born again believer. So begin to proclaim your victory and walk in it. Restore that relationship. That's right. Walk in your victory, my friend. Walk in your victory, ma'am. Walk in your victory, sir. Go have that prayer with your daddy, that conversation with him. Let him know that you're sorry and thank him that he waited on you because he'll never divorce us. That's right. He'll never divorce us. And that's called regeneration. Put hashtag reconnect in the comments. We want to connect with you. We want to assist you and support you on this leg of your journey, on this leg of your journey. My friends, if that's you, put hashtag reconnect. And finally, for those of you that like to be a part of Historical Zion and Missionary Baptist Church, the greatest church in the CSRA, even though we don't have a building because the church is the body of born-again believers. Look, if you are a born-again believer, you can connect with us. We want you to put hashtag connect. Uh, when we were in the building, we would say you could come by letter by uh, Christian experience or as a candidate for water baptism. Look, all you need to do now is if you're an ambassador for Christ, we want you to be an ambassador for HHNBC. Right? Hashtag connect. I'll be in contact with you. Give you an opportunity to ask me some questions and then tell me what you expect out of me as your pastor. Likewise, I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to tell you what I expect out of you as an ambassador, not only for Christ but as for historicals and a missionary Baptist church. My friends, when your mind is set on negativity, it's because you, not the devil, it's because you set your mind on negativity. You think about that. The higher the frequency you shift your mind to, the greater your positive manifestation. Get out of the gutter. Get out of that low thinking. Get up on the higher waves, the closer to the light waves. That's right. You'll have a more positive manifestation. Scripture says, human beings live not on bread alone, but a word that comes from the mouth of God. I've shared that word with you today. I pray that you allow it to permeate your heart, your mind, your spirit. Let it become evident in the lives that you live and in the conversations you have. Now, to those of you that I haven't spoke to today, I just wanted to let you know, look, if nobody told you, I want to be the first to tell each and every one of you, you have an absolutely, an absolutely beautiful smile. If you don't believe me, go find yourself a mirror, smile in that mirror. I guarantee you that on this December the 3rd, look, yourself is going to smile right back at you. Take that as God smiling on you, telling you, 
I love you, so follow my rules. Now, look, go out and share that smile with everybody you come in contact this week. Simply because PJ says so, because smiles are contagious and frowns are frightening. Look, Halloween is over with. And besides, you might run into a vet that is challenged with PTSD, and that might not be a good thing to do. You don't want to frighten them. Look, I absolutely love you. Until next week, next Sunday, next Sunday, we will be having our our communion service. So don't forget it, our communion service at 930. And we're actually going to be inside our little annex. That's right. We're going to be inside our little annex building. And so if you're in the area, come visit us. We're going to have our last communion service of this year, not in the parking lot, but actually in the building. Look, PJ absolutely loves you. God bless you. Stay warm and take care until next week. God bless.